That recording pending, what does that mean now? Yeah, no. Oh, there it is. Okay, we're recording now. All right, good morning to all of you I hadn't spoken to yet. It is such a pleasure to have this session. Um, when when um, Angel Malone came to me and said that y'all were having professional development today and she said who wants to present I'm, I don't know if I was the first one but I sure did respond very quickly I said "Ooh, I get to see my peeps so definitely I wanted to present this morning now all of you know that when we have the, these um, professional development I like to hear from all of you because I don't want to just hear my voice I want to hear comments and questions and Anything that you need to ask, if you need to drop it in the chat box, drop it in the chat box. I'm, I'm asking that you mute your mics from the beginning just in case there's feedback and that kind of thing. But anytime you need to respond to me or ask questions, you can either drop it in the chat box or unmute your mic and, um, and let's have a conversation. Everybody good? All righty. Yes, we're good. OK, um. So here we go. I see I put in the outline that is being recorded just in the event I was going to forget that I put in big bold red, but we're going to start this morning with definitions. Um, there's a lot of terminology we use in Korean technical education and just so that um, some of you that may not know some of the definitions or some of you that know it and you might need a reminder or a refresher about what the definitions are. Um, we'll start with that. Then I have my human services family and consumer sciences booklet. Y'all know I usually do that every year. I think I skipped one year because we got so busy and things were changing so rapidly. So I have revised that. This one is for 2021. New information is not in it yet. I'll be developing another one for 21-22 at a later date. Then I'll talk about the middle school programs and I've already told Brianna how excited I am to see her. And I'm not sure there are any other middle school teachers in Orangeburg, but I'm thankful for those of you who are there. Then I'll show you where you can find some resources for each of your program areas. Any question about the outline? OK, because you know, anytime we get together, we always run out of time, so I have to stay on task here. Um, first of all, the definition for concentrator, and I highlighted here in bold and red, is two courses. So if you hear somebody say two units, that is not correct. Please remember it's two courses in a program. So any of you that have a program and um, the only difference is cosmetology and barbering is three courses in your programs because here it says at least and because of the number of hours your students have to earn, they become a concentrator after they earn their three courses instead of two. Any questions about that? Um, I have a question because does it matter which two courses? Yes, it does. Okay. It does. And um, Hydra, you'll see that outlined in that booklet when we get to that, because I'm going to give all of you the link. And when you get the link, you go to each one of your programs that's in the booklet, okay? Thank you very much. OK, and with the completer, this is different. Completer has to do with units. So concentrator courses, and I just say CC just of a way to remember it. Completer has to do with units. So we look at the completer as a CU. But um, as you can see, you have to be a concentrator first, and then you can become a completer and what the concentrator does, that's when your program, that's when your students are SIP coded. And um, do all of you know what a SIP code is? I'm not sure you'll know, Brianna, since you're new. 
it's the way we classify programs like our culinary program and you'll see it mentioned in that booklet a lot more your programs aren't zip, your program isn't zip coded since you're middle school but um all of the high school programs are okay and and you'll see more about that when you look in that booklet if you have any questions about that please ask okay all righty now this is something we talk about all the time college ready career ready and i wanted all of you to have this information because that's what we talk about getting our students to college whether they are college or career ready when they exit high school so this is what's meant for co college ready and please take in please note the or here and there are some changes that are coming about about this one but right now this is what it means if a student is college ready they can do any of these things and be college ready anyone and be college ready now career ready is the one that's mainly associated with career and technical education and as you can see you have all of these elements for career ready you, the students only have to have one so if they if they do a work-based learning like if they do the course for work-based learning and they have a successful employer exit evaluation or the program and pathway with the career with the credential and you know we recognize our career and ready certifications we have a bunch of certifications but they are mainly looking for the career ready certifications. And Brianna, if you have questions, please stop me because I know you're new and all of this and, and you're middle. So yours is, is different, but a lot of this has to do with the high school. So please ask me questions if you have questions. OK, don't hesitate yes, to ask. Yes, okay. ma'am. So when we talk about high quality CTE, these are some of the elements we look at for high quality CTE. And um, I don't know if y'all do like data and look at data to improve your program, like your course enrollments and and um, how your students are performing and those kinds of things. But these are the elements that we look at. I think there are 12 of them here. What you try and do, and that's how we always refer to our programs and our courses now as high quality. So we try and get as many of these elements in our programs as possible. And if I move the slide too fast, just let me know. And y'all will get a copy of the PowerPoint too, okay? In addition to um, access to the recording. Um, for our industry recognized credentials in the Department of Ed, we have our student reporting procedures guide. And I'm going to drop the link. I think I was planning to drop the link in the. Let me see if I can get it. OK, there it is. I paste it there. I didn't want it to paste there. It just got happy on me. Wait a minute. Let me get it from there. It pasted it right in the middle. It is uh, OK. Here we go. I'm going to put this link in the chat box for you. I'll just clean it up when I get it in there. OK, oh, it's big. Good, because then I can clean it up like I need to. This is the guide that all of you need to be familiar with because this is where all of your programs are. This is where you find out a lot of information. So it's important that you know where. Take that out. Oh, my PowerPoint is restarting. How about that? Hmm. <laughs> oh, technology is so wonderful when it works. Okay, let me get started again. 
Okay, I'm gonna start from the current slide. Here we go. Now, hopefully it won't do that again. I'm trying to get this link out of this. Um, okay, then. Hopefully it won't get mad at me again. And okay, now we on track again. But anyway, that's the link. Um, for the student reporting procedures guide, you have certifications in that document. You have um, definitions in that document. You have any courses and whatever, how you can put programs together to be a completer. So you have a lot of information in that document. So it's, it's important that you have access to this document because whenever you have a question about your programs or definitions of that kind of thing, this is the document you go to, okay? And that's for everybody. Then we have, remember we talked about career ready. You have your career ready certifications. Um, I'm scared to mess with this thing now. I'm gonna go to that page just a little bit and I'll come back. All righty. When you get ready for your career ready certifications, these are the career ready certifications for 2021. Now I'll get that link from this page and I'll put it in the chat for you so that you can go to your programs to see what certifications are available for your program. But this is how the page looks. And as you can see, all of these are career ready certifications. Now down here, we have industry certifications and credential application. This is an application, that list that I just went to, we always take applications from all of you to add to that current list. That list goes to the Education Oversight Committee every year. And I'll show you how the application looks. In the event you know of a certification that is not on that current list or not listed in the Student Reporting Procedures Guide, then you can fill out the application and submit that to our office. And the information where you will submit the form is at the bottom to Merlene Ingram. That's who you submit the form to. And as you can see, the deadline for, let's say for um, 22, 23 is October the 31st, because we try and work ahead with these certifications. Any questions about that? All right. Then we have dual enrollment versus dual credit. A lot of times we use these words interchangeably, and in a lot of cases they can be used interchangeably. But as you can see, we talk about dual credit for CTE completer status. When we're looking at it as completer status, those are also dual enrollment courses, but it's a step that we have taken so that we can approve courses that be, can be used as a part of your completer program. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions about the definitions for dual enrollment versus dual credit? And you're going to see a, um, a good bit of this when we go on. Okay, now we come to the booklet. And this is the booklet that I was talking about. And what I would like for all of you to do, and I'm going to give you the link for it in just a minute as soon as it comes up. Okay, what I'd like for you to do is go to the link. And I'm going to briefly go to it. And as I told you, we talk about high quality middle school and high school programs in human services and family and consumer sciences. These are some of the elements on the side here where we look at partnerships, work based learning, certifications and licenses and post secondary education. 
These are all of the programs that I manage on this side categorized by clusters. Okay, I need y'all to let me know if you were able to access the booklet. If you put in the chat a thumbs up or or something or a yes in the chat. Were you able to access the booklet is the question. Put a no there if you hadn't. I see Zareta did, did a thumbs up. Sophia says yes. Okay, after you get into the booklet, what I'd like for you to do is um, find your section no. in the booklet. And this is the order that you have them in. And see, Brianna, yours is first because you're middle school. So if each one of you will go to your section in the booklet and look at the information that's in there. And I will briefly go through the document. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it, but I want to briefly go through because I have some other information to share with you. In all of the um, information about each one of the programs, you have your definitions first. You have your course codes and um, and you have where you can access your standards, your work based learning guidelines and also your equipment list. If you click on these links and they are hyperlinked. For for middle school, you have the option of possibly offering high school courses. These are the regulations that we follow to make sure that students can get credit for high school in the middle school. Here we have student organization and um, your students can be a part of the student organization, which is South Carolina Family Career and Community Leaders of America. The high school teachers. Um, there are a number of high school teachers that can help you with FCCLA and tell you a lot about it, Brianna, if you're interested in FCCLA. Then you have certifications that's available for middle school students. These are the main skills we work on with middle school students, which are the basic skills, the thinking skills, the personal quality skills. This is where we begin with them. We look at work and volunteer opportunities for middle school students, and this is not an exhausted list of what they can do, but this is just examples of the kinds of things they can do. We have the teacher certification in here, and that's the information we have in the booklet for the middle school programs. I don't think I have any fashion design and interior design teachers, so I'm going to scroll through that part. But as you can see, this is the outline I used for all of them. The high school programs are a little bit different because you have a um, area that you em that's emphasized in your programs. Now I told somebody before when I when they were scrolling through like that, I said, you're making me drunk, you're making me drunk. So I'm sorry if I'm making y'all drunk by scrolling through so quickly. OK, then we get to education and training. We have early childhood and your introduction to teaching. Now, um, early childhood, we'll start there first. OK, I'm not ready to open content. As you know, early childhood is a non-traditional program for males. Then we have here where you can access your standards, your work based learning and your equipment list. You see here your required courses for this one are also your concentrator courses. And remember we talked about the definition for concentrator earlier. These are courses that you can match with the early ch early childhood program to be a completer. 
And this one does require four credits or four units. And we put a note here for teacher cadet based on the code that you use when you're using it as a part of a completed program. Then we have the required credentials and what teachers need to be able to teach um, the early childhood program. We have labor market information. We have where that labor market information was pulled from. That's that link. We have these national certifications. We have some associated careers. And we also have other information that I pulled from the labor market information that talks about the work environment, that talks about becoming a kindergarten or elementary teacher and that kind of thing. OK, I'm going to stop right here. And I know Dottie is in here, Teresa is in here. I'd like to hear from you as to whether or not this information is useful. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's very, very useful. useful. OK, is there anything that needs to be included that I might need to include and the rest of you can respond to this as well because this is how all of yours is laid out. Um, I have, I have a question. question. Yes. OK, okay. when I click when on I the click link in the booklet, the booklet it, has, it has like when I click when on I the one that says standards, standards, it takes it me to the Department of Education website, but it doesn't it does have the standards the of the actual family consumer science. Like the standards it says is digital art and design, graphic communication, mechanical design. Like they're mostly like the high school, looks like high school career classes. That's in your middle school link? Yes, ma'am. OK, let me figure out what's happening. I might have linked it to the wrong thing. You went to standards? Yes, ma'am. And I clicked on that link and that's where it took me. Yeah, and, and it's I guess that's something I was really because I guess that's what I'm really trying to figure out, like my standards, because I have some um, stuff on the state standards that I go by, but it's like it's one of them things where I'm trying to make sure they're the most up to date standards. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to go through and see. How can I put it? The state how like on track, I guess, because it's like since it was no family consumer science class here at our before I got here, it's like it's really nothing for me to go by. So and I, I kind of. Oh. I'm really kind of just. Kind of doing everything on my own. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you asked that Brianna. In other words, it's linked with the wrong thing. And let me let me put in here. I need to change the standard. Link because it's linked to the wrong page. So I'm glad you clicking on stuff and finding that. OK, when you go to CTE core standards. This mm -hmm. is standards page right here, and this is for everybody's standards. This is the standards page, OK? OK, when you go to that page, Brianna, and you'll see this right here that I'm looking at. You click on human services. Mm -hmm. And there you are right there. And okay. I'm going to put that link in. For you, and if you find any more errors in the booklet, please let me know so I can make it make those corrections. OK, okay but this is where you. you find your standards right down here. OK, um, I see y'all some are dropping um, comments in the chat box. As you go through your programs and I see a hand is raised, but I can't see who it is. Uh, Miss Grace. Yes. Margaret. Yes, ma'am. Um, under cosmetology um, organization. Um, can we um, also add National Technical Honor Society? Uh, national 
technical honor society. Okay. And um, certifications. Mm -hmm. um, how how do I access the Southwest Airline Professional Communication Certification? Now, is that a link that you were able to click on? No. I think that's one of ICEV. Are you familiar with ICEV? Good morning, Mr. Murdoch. Just, Good morning, um, Scott, just how you little. doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. OK, um, Margaret. Yes, you asked about the Southwest Airlines. And I can tell you. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Communication. No, go ahead. Mm -hmm. OK, another way you can access it if you don't have a link in this booklet. Remember, I gave you the link to the student reporting procedures guide. All of the certifications are linked in that student reporting procedures guide, whether they are career ready certifications. We have almost 500 plus certifications listed with a description in the student reporting procedures guide. So you can find that link there as well. Thank you. OK. Any other questions, comments? OK, now we did. Let's scroll down. We got to education and training. Um, OK, that's the education cluster. Any more comments about the education and training cluster? OK. Now. This is something else we have for the education and training cluster. These are our dual credit courses for educate, early childhood education and introduction to teaching. Keep in mind, like right here, we have early childhood two is aligned with three different courses. Please keep in mind, if your students take one of those courses, they can only get credit for early childhood two one time. If they take all three of the courses, some of them would have to count as dual enrollment. Only one of them can count as the early childhood two course. Is there any question about that? Now, let, me ask a, let me ask a question. Uh huh. Um, there's a, a possibility of, shi of us shifting and adding education and training. Um, which is the better uh, focus, the, the um, early childhood or the introduction to teaching? I, I don't think you go wrong with either of those choices. Um, one thing about the early childhood, we have a lot of alignments with the technical college and Orangeburg Tech does have those courses, but we also have alignments I don't have as many alignments for the intro to teaching as I have for the early childhood. So it's according to what your goals are as far as what you will add. Are you looking at possibly putting an on site child care center in? Well, actually, we haven't gone that far in the discussion. Um, we just okay. know that that's one of the, that's one of the, um, the uh, top five in our needs assessment. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we, we're just trying to figure out which is the better way to um, to go. OK, OK. Well, let me know if you have any other questions about it and which one you decide, and then I will provide support for whichever way you decide to go. OK, sounds okay. good. Eleanor, may I interject something right here? Of course you can. OK, um, Mr. Murdahl, uh, I don't know if you know, I teach the ECD 101, 102 and 135 dual enrollment through OC Tech. And mm -hmm. I've been very, very pleased. This is the first year we've done the 135 Health Science and Nutrition. 
but I know working with Ms. Hughes at OC Tech, you know, she's been very helpful. Um, the curriculum, the platform they use and so forth. So, you know, I'll be glad to chat later, um, you know, if, if you're interested. Yeah. OK. OK. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. And she, she's been doing that for a number of years with them, so that okay. agreement is in place. Thank you, Dottie. OK. Um, did somebody else want to say something? OK, then we get to hospitality and tourism and see I got to speed up before I run out of time here. Um, when you get to hospitality and tourism, there was a question about the concentrator courses. These are the required courses. You can do culinary arts management one and two or culinary arts management one and bacon and pastry. Those would be the concentrator courses for this one. Any question about that? And this is a three unit program. All of the education and training um, programs are four units. This one is three. Um, how does the intro fit into that? Part? Intro. If you notice, intro counts as a part of the program, but what we did when we identified the concentrator courses, we stuck mainly with the required courses because we knew everybody would get that. Some schools do not offer the intro to culinary. We didn't want to create a hardship for anybody. Okay. So um, that's why we did it based on the required courses. Okay. Right. Good morning, Dr. Lemon. How are you? Good morning. How are you this morning? I am good. I am good. Great, great. Thanks for helping us out today. We appreciate oh, it. Oh, no problem. I was excited to do it. Hadri, did you have any other questions for me? Uh, no, so far that's, I think that. Okay, did you, um, did you look through your you're part of the booklet. I did look through it. I, I clicked on a couple of things. Uh, the uh, only other thing that I might ask is I I, I assume that when it, when it takes us back to the uh, the uh, the main website at the Department of Education, uh, nothing has really changed, right? You just linked us there, but nothing has been updated. Is that correct? I have some updates for you, but I got to get to it in the other part of my presentation. Okay, sorry. Yeah, but that no, you fine. But that'll be that won't that'll be for some of them are for 21-22, but some of them are for 22-23. Okay? okay. Thank you. Yeah, but yeah, we do have some updates, but this one is only for this year. Okay. Thank okay. You. All right. Let me know if you have any other questions. Doc, Please, before before we move on, um, uh -huh. Could you please rerun our um, advertisement for Culinary Arts Instructor is now on the website. So we are, um, unfortunately, um, Miss Summers is retiring and I'm still trying to get her to stay, but. That grandbaby did it, so you can't compete with a grandbaby. No, I sure can. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, if you can run that for me again, I would appreciate it. I will. All right. You know those grandbabies always went out. Okay. Um, that's for culinary. I don't know. If, uh, um, hospitality. I know Sophia. Did you get a chance to look at the hospitality page? Yes, ma'am. I did. Was there anything I needed to add, or is this information helpful to you? Very helpful, and I didn't see anything so far. OK, and like I said, if y'all find broken links, because I get happy and put a lot of links in, but you know that that leads to broken links and mislinked and that kind of thing. So if y'all find errors in it, please let me know and I'll make the corrections as you send them to me. But this is the information for hospitality. And I did um, two different, I did the lodging managers here when we talked about the labor market information. I did the advertising promotions and marketing managers um, for that one. 
these are the um, dual credit courses for culinary that's currently aligned. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention for the early childhood and intro to teaching, I'm going to add under this that it can be for the SIP coded program for hospitality and tourism management or culinary. So I'm adding that for the 21-22 booklet. I'm just adding the other SIP coded programs under this because these courses can be counted in those as well. It's according to what's in the student reporting procedures guide. Any question about that? Yes, okay. Doc, on the yeah. um, on, on those dual credit classes, do mm -hmm. you have, for example, I know we don't have anything in our region, OC Tech, Right. Um, dual credit. Is there, um, can you give us a listing of maybe that you know we can have some conversation with OC Tech to go to other another region to uh, get those those dual credit courses for you know culinary arts and and um, hospitality and tourism. Oh, I have something for you. I just have to send it to you. Okay. It's actually in there policies and procedures. And um, I'm going to talk about the Q&A in just a minute for um, dual credit. Mm -hmm. And um, when you go to that Q&A, the answer is really in there. So if I forget to tell you, I'm going to give you that link in just a minute. OK, sounds okay. good. OK, Barbara, Master Hair Care, Zareda. I saw your comment. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. ma'am. All righty. So you're good with what's in here. Mm -hmm. Everything we've gone through it and I clicked on the links and. They work. OK, awesome. Mm -hmm. OK, that's Barber. Um, and I don't know if I put non-traditional. Yeah, I did. Yes. And Barbering is a non-traditional mm -hmm. program for females. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then for cosmetology, that's non-traditional for males. Now, I know Monica is in here. Mary, do you do cosmetology? Margaret does cosmetology. All of you who do cosmetology, um, I wanted to get a comment from you about the cosmetology section in here. I know Margaret talked a little bit already. Okay, y'all, y'all go ahead and make me hear crickets because I'm not hearing anything. Drop some in well, the chat. I look, well, I looked at the cosmetology too. This is the radar. And um, except for what Margaret wanted to add in there, everything kind of worked. And like I said, I just wrote in the comments like with NTHS and stuff like that, but. Okay. I didn't see anything. OK, and Margaret, would you put your comment in the chat box about NTHS and Dr. Murdoch, okay. would you put in your request for that website again? I'm making notes, but that'll be an additional note to me to mm -hmm. make sure I get that done about the um, vacancies you have. And um, also about I think I'm going to cover the out of service area and I'm going to kind of speed up a little bit so that we can get through this part. Um, aesthetics mm -hmm. and nail tech. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you kind of see what kind of information is in here. If later on you might have this wonderful. Um, oh, I got to do my family and consumer sciences. I can't leave yet. OK, this is family and consumer sciences. Um, Brianna, you might find this information useful as well to know what your students might be able to go into. You have to see where the programs are in Orangeburg. Did anybody want to make a comment about the high school family consumer sciences area? And as you can see, we had several different careers you could go into based on this program. And I have all of that in here, so you know we always take up more room than everybody else. And we have the information here for fashion design, 
interior design, post-secondary teachers. We have the labor market information here. This is the career information, I'm sorry. And then we have our STEM program last, which is food science. Now, um, Dr. Murdoch and Dr. Lemon, if y'all get a burning desire to offer food science, please let me know because I'm trying to build that program. It's it's kind of floundering, but I'm partner. I'm a partner with um, Clemson. Um, Clemson Winthrop Benedict has it now, and I'm already partnering partnering with a number of the DHEC representatives for that program area. It's going to be awesome. I just need somebody to pilot that program so we can get it up and running. So y'all just let me know if you're interested. You said you are. I see a big smile. Dr. Lemon hiding, so I can't see him, but I know he's smiling about that possibility as well. Okay, we only have a few more minutes. This is the update for middle school. We are going to revise the middle school standards, and these are the dates for the revisions. We will place a lot of emphasis on project-based learning. We will integrate information technology in, the, in, those, um, in those courses. STEM and artificial intelligence content. And Brianna, if you might be interested in um, sitting on those middle school standards, if you want to do that, let me know. It's an interesting process. You'll have a chance to give input. I know you're a first year teacher, but it helps a lot for you to understand the process and how we come up, how we um, develop those standards and that kind of thing. And I know you would have you would be looking at it from a fresh um, perspective and um, you will kind of help us to make sure information is where it needs to be for any teacher at any stage of their career. OK, so let me know if you're interested in doing that. If you're not a, if you're not able to take part in the committee, then you are welcome to do it as a field review and I send you the documents and you send me feedback. So each way, either way you want to do it, you can get involved that way. We talked about the high quality middle school programs. We talked about the certifications already. Now to get to the high school program. Um, this is, I talked with um, Marcella Wine Snyder that does teach a cadet. She has developed a four course pathway for early childhood that includes the two teacher cadet courses. This is one option right here. And this is the other one for intro to teaching. So we have partnered to work on that together. This was her design. This was what she said. Is this a possibility? And, and you know, I definitely say, oh, yes, this is definitely a possibility. Um, we have revised since January, as you can see, child development one, two, intro to teaching, early childhood one, two. All of these standards have been revised. They will be up for field review probably sometime this summer. If you want to see the standards prior to them um, going on the um, website for the field review, let me know and I'll send you a draft copy of it. We will be revising intro to teaching one and two in April. Um, for those programs, and this is why I was asking about an on site child care center. What I'm um, proposing to those schools that have an own site child care center to really um, improve the as they yeah, improve the quality of what they offer as far as high quality is concerned. I'm looking at possibly getting them a NAEYC accredited for those on site child care programs. Now for hospitality and tourism. We had bacon and pastry that was already in. What I'm proposing is a bacon and pastry SIP coded program. In November, we created an advanced bacon and pastry program. This program is actually ending up being a four unit program because of the content. It's real, real heavy with a lot of information. And um, so I'm proposing that we do this. And um, I hadn't talked about the safety and sanitation course yet. I'm going to talk about them in a minute. 
but also including them that in that zip code program. Then we have um, for virtual school courses. I'm proposing that we develop these as virtual school courses. Now, when that'll happen, I don't know. But this is the direction I want to go in. As you can see, all of the hospitality and tourism courses are listed. I want that to be a, an online completer program for students. They already have it at University of South Carolina. They have it at the technical colleges that offer it. Trident Tech ver worked very closely with developing the standards for these four. So um, that's um, a goal that I have for those. Now I get to the new courses. <laughs> I did that a little backwards, but y'all just bear with me. We're looking at a new hospitality and sanitation course for our hospitality programs. The reason I'm doing that, this one leads to that Serve Safe Manager course. Um, it will also offer a new option for a dual credit offering. Some of the teachers were already offering Serve Safe um, Manager this course as a dual credit option. We couldn't offer it that way because we didn't have the course. So um, this is what we will be, be developing in June of this year. Then um, Sports Nutrition 2, we hadn't had an enrollment in that course lately. So I'm looking at revising that because I've been able to match it with a, a um, college level nutrition course. So um, and that one, the name will be revised to nutrition and we will work on the revisions for it also in June this summer. These are the um, revision dates. For these two, I will be sending out a form stack or a survey for any culinary teachers who are interested in helping with the revisions and development. I'm saying culinary, but any teachers who are interested in helping with this will have an opportunity. We have to limit the number. I'm also looking at accreditation for our culinary arts program as an add on. And um, what I want to do is offer the ACF accreditation. ACF offers certification for teachers, certifications for students, scholarships, and they have specific certifications for bacon and pastry that's already in our college and career ready listing. Any questions about that? The SIP coded program? Are the um, new courses? Uh, yes. On the certification for teachers, are the teachers going to be responsible for um, paying for their own certification, or is the, the school? Usually, for... I'm. So Go ahead. I'm you... sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm talking over you. Excuse me for that. No, no. Usually, if a certification for teachers leads to a certification for students, certification money can be used to get those teachers certified. It's just according to the budget and those kinds of things. All right. But and um but that has been done where certification for teachers have been paid for through that certification for um that certification money to offer the certification for students. Any other questions about that? Um, and in addition to accreditation for these high school programs, all of the colleges and universities in South Carolina, and I know in Johnson and Wales as well, are ACF accredited. So that means if a student leaves a culinary program in um, a secondary program that's accredited, is a smoother transition for them to the high school. Um, I'm sorry for the post secondary course. So um, just wanted to mention that. And if you're interested in getting your programs accredited, I will add your name to the list. I was planning to start this um, last fall, but I did not want to start this in the midst of COVID. 
so I held off on it and I'm gonna try and get it started um, this fall or this summer. I just have to make the arrangements, but what we will do to um, develop that accreditation manual, we will probably have periodic meetings so that you can get that manual developed and then you can move forward with the actual accreditation process. Now with human services, this is information all of you already have. Um, I talk about the statutes and regulations, how important it is for the barber examiners. Um, and to understand that the barber board is separate from the cosmetology board, they are not together. It's important to have these things in reporting. I'm asking teachers to make sure with the hours that you're reporting, the information that you're sending in to LLR, that your administration has a file that they will have in the event there is a change in um, teachers or if you're not available and inspectors show up and you and you need this information available, please make sure your, your administrators also have your hourly report, report for your students and any other reports you send to LLR so that they can have their own file. Any question about that? Okay, and um, the same with cosmetology, aesthetics and nail technology. I'm asking the same kind of thing be done with them that your, um, Make sure you have your substitutes on file. Make sure any kind of hourly reports or any kind of reporting you do that your administrators have a copy of everything you send to LLR. Now, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going back to Barbara and I just was waiting for Kaz. Um, okay. They know out well, the administrators know where those files are kept. Um, but you're saying to also send them a copy as well as LLR or send them a copy in that um, email that we send to LLR monthly? Well, just not, not necessarily what you, well, let me say it like this. Just like okay. you have your file, mm -hmm. what I want is for the administrators to have a separate location for those same files. Okay. Yeah, just a That's duplication okay. of what you keep. Um, I'd like for the administrators to have that as well. The reason for that is we mm -hmm. have had some mm -hmm. programs, and I know this doesn't happen all over the place, but you never know when an emergency may come up and they, can, they can't find anything yes, or, or they may not have access to it. Mm -hmm. This would make it easier for administrators for um, if there's ever a parent or, mm -hmm. or, or those you know, those type questions come up about the hours and that kind of thing, because mm -hmm. a lot of time the parents do ask questions when teachers might be off for the summer mm -hmm. and then you won't have to worry about coming back in the building to access that information. Mm -hmm. Even though you're sending it into LLR, sometimes that information may get lost or misfiled or that kind of thing. That way your administrators will always have access to those files. That's why I'm asking teachers to make sure your administrators have a copy of the file of everything that's reported to LLR. Okay, and so I want to, and I and I guess being barbering, and I know we have cosmetology teachers on here too. Right. If we, if we, when we send those monthly reports to LLR, if we just CC our administrators, then they can keep those those that report and put it in a file themselves i guess because the way you're kind of saying it i know you don't mean it but the way you're kind of saying it for us to make sure they have the a located file that's putting more work on the teachers if i just email them a copy when i send my reports to llr then that then the administrators can then pull off that and put it where they need it to be would that I'll, be better i'll say it this way <laughs> You work that out with your administrator. Thank you. <laughs> All I want to make sure of is that the administrator have their own copy of everything you send. Because either way, it's going to be additional work for either the administrator or the teacher. So um, you work that out with your administrator as to how that'll be done. Margaret? 
OK, uh, starting now or you want us to go back how far? Probably um, this school year. OK. Because I know y'all have those files already. You yes. have your file that you've already developed and then you can work with your administrator as to how you will um, keep that up, whether you email CC them on the emails or whether you do a file, but you can work that out with the administrator with the best way for both of you to do that. OK, OK, thank you. And um, in fact, we had a situation where this year a teacher got sick. And um, if that administrator hadn't had those files, it would have been somewhat of an issue. She had her files. Um, it was difficult to access them. I think they were in a locked um, file cabinet or something. They didn't have the key because it was an emergency. So this will take care of it in the event there's an emergency situation. Now for family and consumer sciences, I also added the dual credit teacher cadet um, as an option for family consumer sciences. I'm also adding where family consumer sciences can offer dual credit courses like the nutrition course. That'll be a dual credit course for family and consumer sciences. We just finished revising the parenting ed standards and I have three minutes, so let me talk a little bit faster. These are the virtual school courses that are currently offered through the Office of Virtual Education at the Department of Ed, and we are looking at expanding that offering. So actually, this is a completer program for family consumer sciences that's already virtual. For STEM, we have food science. This is what I'm trying to convince um, Dr. Lemon and Dr. Murdoch to do. I would be awesome if they would jump on that bandwagon with me. I'm going to see. I'll just keep inviting. Resources, um, textbook committees. These are the textbooks we will be reviewing um, soon. I hadn't gotten word from Chris Stewart at this point when this will occur. And resources, um, you'll have these links since I'm pretty much out of time. I have two minutes now, but you'll have these links in the PowerPoint when you receive the resources. This is how you can help by continuing to send me those questions, by continuing to send me recommendations for improvement, applying for certification, sending that information in, letting me know who I can partner with to help your programs, letting me know if there are any mentors available that you are aware of, when we do standards development and revisions, we always ask, I always send it out on the listserv to give you an opportunity to participate. If you can't be in the meetings, I offer a field review option like I did for Brianna. Um, advisory committee members, I usually, I do have a statewide advisory committee. Let me know if you're um, interested in working on that. Um, any special task force, because a lot of time when we have different um, initiatives going on. I ask for um, assistance with that and any other um, way that you might think of, like if when you find errors in things like Brianna found, please let me know so I can make those corrections. And um, but this is how you can help me and y'all have helped a lot. That's why our programs are where they are. So keep that good information coming and um, I appreciate any any correction you have, any question you have, and any way that you can help our programs improve. This is my contact information. Please keep in touch. Let me hear from you. That's the only way we can continue to improve and move in the right, right direction. And it's 930 and I have stopped talking. Any questions? OK. Um, thank you so much for attending this morning. And um, like I said, I appreciate hearing from all of you. I get excited when I get a chance to meet with you. So y'all keep this kind of thing going on. I can't tell you about how awesome all of you are.
Miss, Miss Dr. Lemon, did you have anything you wanted to say before we sign off? Uh, nothing major, but I did want to just thank you for your time and service this morning. We certainly appreciate it. Um, I know it was kind of short notice, um, but we thank you again for just pulling everything together and meeting with our team this morning. Okay, Dr. Murdoch. No, ma'am. I think we're in good position. Um, it's just if you could give us one more shout out on the on the uh, culinary arts position. I'll do that. Great. And look like my director is in here, Angel. Did you want to say anything before we sign off? There you are. I didn't realize hey. you were in. <laughs> hey. Hey, everybody. Um, this is Orange my director, y'all, Angel Malone. <laughs> so Orangeburg is family. I, I, I'm glad to see so many familiar faces on the line and just thankful for you allowing us to uh, be able to provide professional development for you today. So thank you. Great job, Eleanor. I'm super excited about the things that are happening. Continue to do great things, Orangeburg. We're proud of you. Thank you. All right. And one more time, I want to thank you. And I always say I, I, I do like um, Goma Powell for those of you who are familiar with Goma Powell. New ones, the younger folks won't be from as familiar. Excuse me a minute. I always like to end with thank you, thank you, thank you, because that's what Goma Powell used to say. Mm -hmm. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Please keep in touch. And this ends our session and the recording will be available. Um, it'll just take a minute to get it where it needs to. It has to go through certain processes, but I'll make sure the recording is available for you as well. OK, everybody, take care, be safe, and I'll see you next time. And I look forward to hearing from all of you.